Ankle pickers, welcome back. Set the spread for UFC San Diego. That's August 13th at the Pachanga Arena in San Diego, California. San Diego, California, USA. Uh, that's a 6 p.m. Central main card, 4 p.m. local Pacific time. Uh, sorry in advance to Reese, who will be looking for something else to do that night, I guess. Um, we do have a six fight main card as six fight main card as of today We're recording in advance here. Um, but I got my favorite five of those six. You guys are going to figure out who that is here in a second. Uh, Reese coming off the most recent victory, 14 to 12 in 2022. Let me guess. Kobe cut out Alexa Grasso, Vivian Arusha. <laughs> Didn't cut that one. Oh, I was going to call you a sexist. Okay. No, he cut out. Oh, Nina Nunes Nunes Calvillo. Calvillo. I didn't see that one. Yeah, <laughs> did cut that one. That I didn't see that one. Okay. Um. Anyways, let's start with the one that I didn't cut. A middleweight bout: Gerald Mearshart and Bruno Silva. Reese will kick things off. Man, man, that's this is one. Um. So, did it has Bruno Silva always been a middleweight, or does he bounce between light heavyweight and middleweight? Has he always been a middleweight? It looks like he's always been a middleweight from his record. He's a humongous middleweight. Um, and Mearshart's more of the technical middleweight. I don't think he cuts a lot of weight. Um, I do think he... But he, he brings an interesting dynamic. So one thing I know is Mearshart is always the underdog or seemingly feels like he's always the underdog. Bruno Silva... Dan would know better than me on what his jiu-jitsu status is looking like. I know that he's a striker. I'm assuming because he's Brazilian, his jits has to be decent. But he has a lot of power. Um, and he took this year in March Alex Pereira to a decision, which that's aged very well, looking how Sean Strickland fared. So I think Bruno Silva is going to be a favorite. I think it's going to be pretty sizable. I think he gets it done in the distance. I'm going to go Bruno Silva minus 285. And I hope that doesn't make me look like a fucking idiot. Because like, that's no, how you're all over it. Okay. Um, you're forcing me to hit the button and, and that's to go over the three. I'm going three, 300 on the dot, but you're on top of it. GM3 is going to be undersized. He's going to be looking for the jits with Bruno Silva can more than match up with um, and the speed and power on the feet is all Bruno's. So I think it's going to be a sizable favorite. I think that Reese is right around it with the 285, but I'm going to go over it because I wouldn't be surprised if it's got a four in front of it. Wow. Okay, good. I was nervous about 285 because we don't usually set main card lines that high. Um, so, okay, we take those. Opened 200 end of July, just what, a couple days ago. Um you guys got it going in the right direction, though. 260 Bruno Silva today. Sniffing. I might want to jump on that. I, I like that. Number a lot. That. Dan, what is his JIT status, though? Asking for a friend. Um, I don't know on paper, but it, it's That's good enough only- that I was yelling at my TV during the Alex Pereira fight. Fucking taken to the fucking mat. That's, that's the – well, all I want to know is what his defensive JITs looks like. Because if he can stay out of a sub for Mearshart – Mearshart's more than happy to stay on his back, and he's more than happy to get pieces up on the feet. He's not actually happy to get pieces up on the feet, but it'll happen. So uh, that's the only thing I want to check. But, yeah, 260 seems appealing. I won't lie. Um, light heavyweight bout. Devin Clark and Azamat Mirzakhanov. Dan, go for it. Devin Clark's a guy who I have a lot of respect for, hasn't had a lot of success recently. Um Great wrestler, not a whole lot else to offer besides the wrestling. Um, the inter- the interesting thing about Mihomi Azamat is he's coming off of an abysmal, abysmal performance uh, where he got, what was it, a flying last knee. second flying knee, but came into that contest with a ton of hype. Um, he's uh, not young, but definitely – mid prime Russian that got the striking to go along with that Dagestani style wrestling. Um, having more tools, I want to say he's the favorite, but I'm really kind of worried to say that me, my homie Azamat is the favorite. Um, 
just because Black, De Devin Black Bear, Brown Bear, what was it? Brown Bear, uh, Devin Clark. I mean, he's got experience. He's been around. He's fought Rakic and Blahovic and uh, Anthony Smith and Iman Kudalaba. But um, the experience is it only goes so far when it's all losing experience. So I'm going to go Azamad as the favorite, and I'm going minus 135. I'm going to go minus 120 for Azamat. And and the, one of the reasons why is he was he was minus 195 against Chukwi. And I think Devin Clark, in my opinion, um, is a more experienced slash tougher opponent. So that I know that's an opinion for sure, but I do believe that. So I want to instantly go lower than that. Plus the performance was bad. So go a little bit lower. Plus I was shocked by this, but when Dan mentioned middle of the prime, he's 33 right now, which, it, which is technically middle of the prime. But if you're not making your UFC debut until you're 32 or 33, um, I don't know if he's as highly touted as a lot of these other guys that come in here, even though I know that, um, you know, Russians, the Russian fighters have great success. I don't know if he's going to be in a similar camp as that, even though I know he's 11 to 0, but I'm going to go minus 120. The minus 120 simply because I think people might blindly follow this man, but I, I, I probably find myself on Devin Clark that night. 175, Azmat Mirzakhanov. You saw where oh, wow. said the name, Dan. Who do you know? Uh, Devin Clark could be a minus one. Devin Clark was not going to be close Devin to a Devin Clark could be a favorite. minus 175. Devin Clark's great. Look, he's got no th shot. the biggest thighs. No Reese, you should be happy. Shot. It's a spot to be on Devin Clark, it sounds like. Right. That's what you're I, but I think, I think that if Sharps don't hit this, and I'm assuming they already would have, um, the only reason is because we have our hands It opened 170. Today. It hasn't moved much. Okay, so okay, so it hasn't been much because what I'm wondering is, would would coming into fight night, am I going to get a, a better? Is he going to be a minus two hundred clip? You know, being undefeated, Devin Clark, mixed results. You know, I don't know. It's hard to play for that though. So I might I might get in there, parlay Devin Clark and uh, Bruno Silva here. Cook early. One one, Reese will lead things off. Featherweight bout between David Onama and Nate Landwehr. I actually just taped David Onama, not for the right reason. I taped him when I was taping Mason Jones for a couple fights ago. Mason Jones is a guy who got dominated by Ludovic Klein. Dan, do you know who beat Ludovic Klein? Fucking everyone. Nate Landwehr, baby. Nate Landwehr. Uh, Nate Landwehr is a guy that I've actually known a lot about for a while um i see here's the thing that's weird is i knew who nate landwehr was but i don't remember it being from m m1 i remember it being from something else but apparently he was an m1 guy so i swore it was cage warriors so maybe i just caught him once late night on fight pass and that was that um but he he's had mixed results in the ufc um the most notable one that I think is, 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 has aged poorly was that when he got caught in the clinch with Herbert Burns um, of flying knee to Julian Arosa, not great either, but then he's beaten guys like Ludovic. So the, the, what I know from, from Landwehr is he's a maniac, loves, loves to stand and bang, but clearly he sometimes can love it too much to the point where he gets caught. David Onamo has beyond impressed me. He also trains at a glory MMA, which you cannot overlook. James Krause out there is a genius. And I usually don't love a lot of these um, ex-UFC head coach ran gyms. And I, I know James Krause might still be competing, but like Uriah Favors one, it, it, I don't like it as much um, as lifelong striking coaches, lifelong wrestling coaches. But this man, this David Onama, Looked great against Mason Jones, which we can argue whether how, I mean, it was short notice, whatever. Destroys Gabriel Benitez. Uh, I don't really remember this Garrett Armfield one as much, but I'm going to imagine David Onama is a favorite. I'm going to imagine it's slight because Landwehr has some uh, feathers in his cap as well. I'm going to go Onama minus 155. 
and, and I'd be fine if Danny went under or over because uh, I really feel in the dark. I'm not 100% sure on this one. Um, yeah, that's a decent number. Uh, or, not, or Landwehr's a guy I don't have – great reads on really for for most of his career i'm gonna be honest um hopefully i'm on the right side here i came in with my number a little bit bigger than yours from what i from how impressed i've been from david ornama i mean the mason jones fight he way outperformed the number i mean the number should have been coin flip even and maybe that's because we're seeing a lot of red flags come up come to light uh on mason jones's side but since then, he's, he's had absolutely zero impediments, roadblocks, anything to, to stop him or hold him back. Um, and if I'm going to be honest, this win over Ludovic Klein doesn't impress me as much as it should because of how much bigger Ludovic looked against Mason Jones. It looked like a, a new Ludovic. Um, I think Onama is going to be a bigger favorite here. I had it closer to minus 200, and I'm a little scared. Mm-hmm. But I'm yeah, going to go minus like 190. I don't David love it that high. I don't love it that high. You could be totally right, um, but I think Landwehr has a little bit more game than that. We'll see, though. I'm looking at also like a three- or four-inch reach advantage. I think Onama is, is just the better athlete, 28 years old versus 34. He is kind of raw, though. He is kind of raw still. Definitely. But I agree. I don't think, I don't think the rawness – and how crisp certain aspects are go much into the spread when you're on a two fight win streak and had that. And, and I think that the Mason Jones fight was actually a net win for him. Um, even though he dropped it. This line's come down quite a bit since opening at minus 300 Onama. Not enough though. I can Not enough that. though. Minus 215 Onama. We're feeling good. It's a bad line. We're cruising. That's a bad line. I'm not, I don't think I'm taking land wear, but that's a bad line. We got time to make that decision. Uh, we have a co-main event though. In the meantime, women's flyweight, Alexa Grasso and Vivian Arapo. Uh, so yeah, this one is, off, yeah. I don't know exactly what this line is going to be, but this is one I can already tell immediately. Isn't just a knee jerk. All right, dog or pass. Let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, this is one I'm, I'm going to tape. This is one I'm actually a little excited for. Alexa Grasso is legit. Her boxing is fucking phenomenal. I really can't stress that enough. And and um, losses in 2019 and 2018, Tatiana Suarez and Carlos Esparza, to me, are not red flags at all. And then what we've seen since then, Gian Kim, Macy Barber, JoJo Wood, those are all really, really great results. Um and I think that at 28 years old, we could see a, a, a legit contender in Alexa Grasso. Araujo has the skills. I mean, she's beaten good ladies. Um, KGB Lee is a woman who I have seemingly more respect for than she has for her, herself. But um, I think that's a great win. I think these are just women's at, women at two different ends of their careers. And I'm going to have Alexa Grasso as a favorite because of that. Um, even though Araujo has only lost to Chuk and Jessica I, and, and and those really are elite level at women's MMA, um, especially the times that those took place. But um, I think Alexa Grasso is, is ready to step into that elite category and, and into that upper echelon. So I think she's going to beat up on Araujo here. So I, I, I've got Alexa Grasso minus 170 in this matchup for the win. That's a good bet. Uh, I love Alexa Grasso. Like genuinely love Alexa Grasso. She is, she reminds me of Ariana Grande. I've said that before, changed my mind. But she also uh, went to a majority decision against now champ Carlos Barza and has dismantled some women on, on the feet now that she's hit her stride. 
Like, I'm not counting the Tatiana Suarez or Felice Herrig days. So, I mean, that's so long. She's really hit her stride in 2020. The Macy Barber win, I think, is most notable. The JoJo Wood win also is one that you have to respect because it was done differently. I look at Alexa Grasso as a striker, and she got it done via submission there. So you have to tip your cap there. Vivian Arujo, on the other hand, she's a girl like Dan said. I think she's on that tail swing of her career. Women's uh, careers can go a little bit longer though, because they need bodies. And it's, I know like I'm thinking of uh, Dan, this is going to bother me if we don't get it. Who's the, uh, the Marion Hano. Thank you. Not that you helped, but Marion Hano, like she went into 42, 43, wasn't very that. So, so who knows, but she's at least is her peak athleticism. She's on the way down here. Caitlin Jukakian, although she's a fan, phenomenal on the feet i do think she brings a similar skill set to the table as grasso grasso doesn't move as well but it's a striking type of of opponent i'm gonna go under 170 and i wanted to go over the entire time and then now i'm looking at vivian arujo's record and i'm like jessica I and caitlin jukakian are her only losses in the ufc it's not that bad i'm gonna go 160 though there's dan didn't give me a lot of room I wanted to go over. I was going to say Alexa Grasso minus 205. I look at that record. I'm like, I'll go 160. It is women's. I think I like the top end here. You do? Yeah. I might have fucked it. Didn't fuck it. Minus 150. Let's go! Come on! Poha! That was... And opened opened 160 also. That was pure tapology record vibes. That was literally all that was. And we've all been there. I know Dan's been there. I know Dan is like, this guy... Looks at Tapology, goes, ooh, this guy. You're a little thud. Nonetheless, all tied up going into the main event. Bantamweight bout between Cheeto Vera and Dom Cruz. So, Reese, go ahead and get started here. We're tied. Mm-hmm. Um, man, this is tough because, Dan, I hope you're sitting down. I think I'm putting Dom Cruz as the slight dog now i full disclosure will be on dom cruz that night dom cruz has never lost a non-title fight dom cruz in my opinion is a hall of famer dom cruz stylistically is near impossible to plan for on the flip side dom cruz is 37 years old dom cruz spends a lot of time working on media, uh, covering fights. I'm not saying he doesn't train. I'm just saying that it's not his sole focus these days like it used to be. Marlon Vera on the other guy is a guy that is getting close to being on my fade train. Now I know what you're thinking, you're fading Vera. The reason why is because I think Vera, a lot of his success has come from, I mean, I love the guy, but it's like, for example, the Sean O'Malley win. It, it might be a little bit fluky of a win. You know what I mean? Something did happen with his leg. That really catapulted him into being, got a Jose Aldo fight after that and catapulted him into being that guy. Um, the Frankie Edgar front kick, super sweet to watch, but it's, I mean, it's a 40-year-old Frankie Edgar on the tail end. Uh, but the Rob Font mis- dismantling was impressive. Moral of the story, I think this line's going to have a little more juice on it than it should on the Vera side. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. If I was setting this line, if I was Vegas, I have Dom Cruz minus 130. I'm not Vegas. I know where the public's at. I know the, the general opinion around Vera right now. And for that reason, I'm going to flip it. And I'm going to do Vera minus 130. I think I'm, I will be on Cruz this night, though, unless something drastic happens. I think that Cruz is going to edge out a decision, um, and I think the five rounds benefits him. But that's all. That's all I was going to say about that. I think your narrative is 100% right. Everything, everything you said, I completely agree with. Um, until we got down to the brass tacks of the numbers of, of how far the public's swinging this. I'm with you. I'm gonna be all over Dom Cruz. Okay. Um, come fight night, even before. I, that love Cheeto Vera. 
That I mean, he's an icon. He is. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I I look at the matchup and I say like, what's stopping Dominic Cruz from doing exactly what Jose Aldo did? Right. Which which, which looked easy, and and the footwork like advantage that Cheeto Vera has over a guy like Rob Font is not there over a Dom Cruz with some of the best footwork of all time. Yep. But people thought, love this Cheeto Vera guy. Dan, no insult intended. Because I look at you as one of the sharpest minds in all of mixed martial arts, especially capping. Like, a mixed martial arts capping one of the sharpest minds. I thought you were going to bite into that Vera, the Vera apple. I'm no, sure. no, 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 no. I'm more just noticing these Casey Kenny and Pedro Munoz lines for Dominic Cruz. To me, they should be minus 180, minus 200 guys that – Dom is better than, more experienced than, whatever. And there's always this question of ring rust that Dominic Cruz has always been the guy that said, doesn't exist, doesn't exist. Doesn't exist I'm your baby. guy especially, it doesn't exist. <laughs> and I just don't think he's going to get that respect here anyways. I mean, like. No, it's, it's I don't, yeah. Fuck. I'm going over you and it pains me. But I'm going Cheeto Vera, minus 155. Yep. And I think I'll it's fuck. huge. Dom Cruz should be minus 155. I agree but with you. Cheeto Vera. <laughs> Kobe, why the fuck am I playing this show against Danny? It's not fair. We literally – tell me how often we're – other than the Shavkat Rachmanov versus uh, Neil Magny, Danny and I have the same breakdowns, the same reasonings, the same lines. It's like, oh, my God, you're killing me, Smalls. You guys are going to – I know you guys already said you're going to be on Dom Cruz. Minus 190 Cheeto Vera is where it's sitting right now. I lost. I lost. But for those watching on YouTube, fist bump from the boy because value city, baby. How early are you hitting that? Do you think we see a two there? I'm going to do 50%. Now. It opened minus 155 just the 29th, so three days ago, recording this on the second. Dan, I'm, I'm going to do okay. I'm, I'm going to do 50% bet now, 50% bet later. Wow. That that's a lot for me to think about. I, Dominic yeah, Cruz, value baby. I just don't think people realize. Like, I think the narrative is what's pushing this line, not sharp action from say. I mean, Kobe's the comeback plus like 175, 170. 160 is what I have down on DraftKings. Let's see where we can get the best line here. 163. I mean, I, I'm on uh the tapology. Dominic Cruz against prime Henry Cejudo for the title is plus 175. We're, we're going to, we're going to put that same line on Cheeto Vera at this point in their careers. Like, Ridiculous. dude, I'm telling you, people think Cheeto is the second coming for some reason. And I haven't, I agree. His personality is awesome. He's as humble as they go. He's sweet. I agree. His fights are exciting, but like, come on, like Cheeto never holds gold and no one can convince me. He will. He's not that echelon of talent. In my opinion, in my opinion, I know that I could be wrong. I'm just saying. I mean, Jose Aldo disposed of him, and it was with footwork and a jab. That was it, really. I know. And, and again, we're talking about legends of the game. Like, Dom Cruz studies this shit beyond belief. We're going to see Dom Cruz emulate a, a Jose Aldo-type game plan. Speaking of uh, Jose Aldo, we've got in, in the next couple of weeks, your boy, you know Rob Devalos Beely. There's no line on that, is there, Kobe? No, nope, not set yet. Tragic. Marab minus 550. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Are we going to alert the shit out of that? <laughs> All right, Dan. Close this up. We'll be back later in the week with main episode before UFC San Diego. Hold on.